right now, you are being watched. Every move you make is silently being observed. The veil of privacy is thinner than you think. Each tap on your keyboard, every glance captured by nearby lenses, every purchase you commit to the digital ether doesn't just vanish. It feeds into the creation of something uncannily familiar, your digital twin. This entity isn't just a cluster of random data points. It's a sophisticated profile sculpted by the very devices we invite into our sanctuaries. Welcome to the reality where our digital footprints are not just traces, but a blueprint for a virtual alter ego crafted in the shadow of our physical and digital lives. In September 1858, Atlantic Monthly published a piece by transcendentalist author Christopher Pierce Cranch called An Evening with the Telegraph Wires. In this sci-fi story, Cranch writes about a man who, after being hypnotized, becomes imbued with the ability to understand Morse code simply by touching telegraph wires. He soon develops the ability to not just understand the electronic messages, but the thoughts and feelings of the people on the other side of the wire. The unnamed narrator connects to the inner lives of strangers across the globe via their digital impressions. And through this power, he discovers a network of wires in France set up by Napoleon's government with the intent of spying on its own citizens. It's a revelation that destroys the illusion of privacy. Technology made to bring the world together becomes weaponized against the citizens for the benefits of the surveillance state. The author's vision is absolutely chilling. Cranch saw the potential for empathy and unity through connectivity, but also predicted the ways it could tear us apart. Unfortunately, he wasn't wrong. Take the work of Alan Turing, for example. His work directly resulted in the modern computer age, and his invention was the first computer ever created. And immediately, we used it to eavesdrop and intercept the communications of the Germans during World War II. This crowning achievement of the Allies helped bring down the Axis powers. But the techniques behind the technology for private surveillance remain very much the same today. The birth of the digital age we live in now started with the intention to hack codes. And of course, that was war. Literally, the world war. And who knows how many lives Turing saved. But how do we justify this intrusion today? Because in our modern society, we're used to the government's surveillance of personal information in the name of public safety. It's why we allow provisions in the Patriot Act. The Patriot Act. The Patriot Act. The USA Patriot Act. This new law that I signed today will allow surveillance of all communications used by terrorists. This landmark legislation was passed in less than two months in the wake of 9-11, when law enforcement, Congress, and pundits all came clamoring for something, anything, to prevent another devastating attack on American soil. This is a two-front war. It's a two-front war. And it's a war we're gonna win on both fronts. And while there were plenty of critics, both then and now, Congress passed the Patriot Act swiftly and continues to keep it in effect till date. In many ways, this moment was the birth of the modern surveillance state. Only now, it wasn't an empathetic hand touching the telegraph wires. The same tools developed to snuff out terrorism were slurping up almost everything, the entirety of your digital footprint. Technically awe-inspiring, and yet a shocking display of power and government overreach. But did it keep us safe? The Patriot Act gave the FBI pervasive powers to tap phone lines, investigate computer records, check your banking transactions, and monitor your credit history. And these agencies did not hold back from using all the tools at their disposal. The FBI didn't even need to have a judge sign off on a warrant. They literally just had to write what was called an SLS letter, basically saying this person's a suspect, and that was enough to give them full access to your digital twin's data points. From 2003 to 2006, they used these powers to investigate more than 200,000 people. And of all those investigations, they made only one terror-related conviction. Now, I'm sure the FBI would argue that you have to measure their success rate with incidents prevented, not convictions. Maybe 
there's plenty going on behind the scenes to protect us that we'll never even know about. When testifying before Congress in 2013, the FBI director at the time said their surveillance programs prevented dozens of terrorist attacks, including a potential bombing of the New York Stock Exchange. But regardless of whether these methods are effective, the technology driving the surveillance state isn't slowing down in the slightest. In fact, it appears to be accelerating exponentially. In 2002, the NSA rolled out a program called the Total Awareness Project, which collected data points on US citizens and created this centralized database on suspected terrorists. It was shut down very quickly the following year when Congress cut the funding for the program. But not long after, the NSA began a warrantless surveillance program called Stellar Wind, which led to even more data mining of American citizens. The government agency worked hand in glove with the nation's leading service providers to monitor, well, absolutely everyone. In 2013, the infamous leaked documents show that NSA and FBI had direct access to emails, documents, GPS traces through another program called PRISM. And of course, data providers have denied any involvement or knowledge of this program. Now, while these programs are officially over, the damage was done and their intent to collect data on every citizen was made abundantly clear. These programs are kind of like whack-a-mole. You smack one down, five more pop up. And now with AI entering the picture, these tools are even more sophisticated and are being used by actors with different motives. Yeah, it's not just the nation states that have access to this technology. Big Brother in a Box is getting heavily democratized. And it shouldn't surprise anyone who has a pulse that your phone is the biggest data collection contraption in your life. After all, when an app asks you for your permission to activate GPS, microphone, and camera, and almost all apps ask you that, you probably just click accept. But get this, if a hacker breaks into your microphone, they could also record your keystrokes to discover your passwords. And it just keeps getting worse. Someone could use Wi-Fi tracking to reveal your movements with pinpoint accuracy. And since Wi-Fi signals are literally everywhere, they can track you from room to room. In 2019, the New York Times published their findings on sensitive location data. They received tracking movements from mobile phones that came from software users downloaded with and without their knowledge. And get this, this data wasn't collected by the government. It came from one small data location company that took all these findings, packaged them together, and sells them off to the highest bidder. But nation states can get a hold of this data too. Agencies can fairly easily obtain geofence warrants based on your GPS history. And even if they don't know exactly what they're looking for, these agencies can request this kind of data in an entire geographic area to narrow down their search. This kind of God mode aggregation has led to law enforcement leveraging Ring and Google home cameras to track down suspects and make arrests. And your permission is not required. Of course, that all sounds very ominous, but the reality is that many of us already opt into data collection just by logging into literally any website and accepting cookies. And if you think just by holding off on downloading TikTok keeps your information safe from the Chinese government, then you may want to take another look at your apps. TikTok's developer ByteDance is responsible for dozens of other highly popular apps. And it's not just them. There's a good chance your device may already be transmitting your data back to a foreign government without you even knowing. Now, to be fair, there hasn't been a case found yet where the Chinese government has cracked down and requested user data, but how long until they ask? And really, what's stopping them? What happens when they use the same tactics is good old Uncle Sam. And of course, not every actor's motives are nefarious. Some are completely capitalistic. For example, many companies sell AI surveillance technology to retailers as a way to curb shoplifting and fraud. But this very same technology can be used to assess your age, your income bracket, giving outlets an overview of you as a customer as soon as you walk through the door. Over the years, your patterns, preferences, favorite songs, memories have all been stored and analyzed for maximum profit to create your digital twin, a virtual caricature as fully formed as you are now. Of course, there is one nation that has embraced AI on a massive scale already. 
In 2018, the Chinese government implemented gate analysis in their surveillance cameras. And if you don't know, gate technology uses artificial intelligence to identify a person based on their body size and movements. Gate technology can identify people from up to 165 feet away, whether your face is covered or not. The advanced surveillance system has grown exponentially over the past few years. And according to the developers, it doesn't require the cooperation of citizens. Of course, this attitude isn't surprising. After all, China once had facial recognition software installed in toilet paper dispensers in public bathrooms. That machine had to scan your face before dispensing you your quota of toilet paper. And well, if it wasn't enough, too bad. You had to wait nine minutes before you could get a refill. The bathrooms even featured an alarm that would sound if you spent too long inside. Now the cities with these dispensers faced a huge public backlash. And even in China, they were removed after just a few years of operation. But the genie was definitely out of the bottle. Because if you weren't allowed privacy in the bathroom, where else can you expect to be monitored? In fact, the toilet revolution led to the China Cyberspace Administration drafting new rules and regulation for the management and security of facial recognition technology. These regulations required a specific purpose along with sufficient necessity to use this technology, and it even calls for individual consent. Maybe it goes without saying, but governing China is complicated to say the least. Some believe the state needs to deploy such methods to maintain law and order in a country over one and a half billion people. But there's a ton of conflicting voices on this issue. But make no mistake, while China made the headlines with the story, Russia, Japan, India, the UAE are all fast-tracking this technology as well. Only the tiny country of Luxembourg has refused outright to link facial recognition to video surveillance systems. Almost every other developed nation is either using this technology or prepared to integrate it very, very soon. But we can't write off the flip side either. What happens when the very same technology paired with gate analysis could recognize somebody in danger and alert authorities immediately? So what if a missing person was tracked that much faster to prevent something terrible from occurring? And while gate analysis seems incredibly Orwellian, the same technology can be used to observe body movements and provide treatments that improve muscular activity, alleviate pain, improve surgical procedures for patients. In other words, the data collected for your digital twin could actually improve your standard of living. It's easy to write off this technology as both scary and obtrusive, and make no mistake, that's exactly what it is, but really, it's only half of the truth. This data can help us construct a reality where your digital twin could become aspirational instead of just a trackable corporate chill. Cranch's short story, An Evening with the Telegraph Wires, has implications that reverberate to today. It is mind-blowing to me how somebody in the 1800s could foresee the implications of technology at its very infancy. Gosh, it is easy to shrink into a fetal position when you think about the technology in your pockets for more than 10 seconds at a time. But there's a kernel of optimism that we should not ignore. Connectivity and data sharing can make our world smaller in the best possible ways, actually showing us where we connect on this Venn diagram of humanity. An AI deployed against our digital twins could improve our health, increase productivity, and even improve our relationships. All right, to wrap this up, the religiously inclined among us often say, there's a God up there who's watching you. Now we may not be able to vouch for the veracity of this assertion, but definitely, Big Brother down here is watching you, watching you very closely and all the time. Now, whether that's good or bad, I guess that depends on who's touching the wire. All right, so this video is an introduction to the modern surveillance state. I'm planning to make another video that goes way deeper into cutting edge AI research and its implications of operationalizing this digital twin, both the good, the bad, and certainly the ugly as well. Now, if you enjoyed this video and want to get a teaser for what it might be like to create this all-encompassing digital twin, check out this video on Elon Musk's grand design for X. How his operation is awe-inspiring. You've got satellites in the sky, you've got Tesla on the ground, and Twitter in our pockets. It'll give you a sense for what happens when you put all these pieces together. Bilavo signing off, and I will see y'all in the next one.